adhering to the will of the Father. My will or thy will? That is the real question, and everything comes down to it. In today's society, we glorify self-will, my will. We think that we can decide on our own what should be valued, what is meaningful, what is life. We treat our will as central, believing it can shape reality as we wish. But just because we want reality to be a certain way does not mean that it ever will be. Reality does not just change because we want or will it to. There is a way things are, a makeup of being that lies far outside our capacity to choose or change it. That is why all self-will is fundamentally false and why glorifying self-will is a path to disappointment and destruction that contradicts reality, pure and simple. The more we want things to be my way, the further we drift from the way Christ showed us. Because for Christ, everything comes down to doing the will of the Father, thy will. Jesus does not speak on his own authority, but the Father's. His work is the Father's work, which he has been sent to do. He teaches us to pray in honor of the Father's name, to ask for the Father's kingdom to come and to consent to his will. Even Jesus' very first words tell us that he is here on earth to do the Father's business. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, he uttered the paradigm of all faith when he prayed, Not my will, but thy will be done. The yes of faith is always a yes to the Father and to the reality that the Father wills and wants. St. Catherine of Siena knew this. Her letters are filled with prayers and pleas to slay her self-will, for she knew that it is only by uniting our will to God's that we are saved from the disaster of wrong desire, perversion of the mind, and the habits of sin. We only share in the fullness of being when we realize that we are nothing on our own and hand our whole being back to God for him to dispose of it as he wills. If we want to understand how this works, we have to think about things from the ultimate perspective, not merely about the short term, or even in terms of our life plan, generations, or centuries. We think that because our self-will and our desires have some temporary effect, that they are actually real. But seeing ultimately only God and what he approves is real. It is a father who chooses which branches will stay secure in the vine of eternal life, which are pruned so they may grow better, and which must simply be discarded into the fire. Only what we co-create with God has being. If what we want or will is not in accordance with God's reality. It really does not have any reality at all, except, we might say, the anti-reality of sin and evil. As Thomas Aquinas told us, insofar as we are sinners, we fail to be and are not, end quote. Insofar as we are sinners, we fail to be and are not. For to be in any ultimate, lasting, and full sense means being in God, with God, through God. And that means thinking, willing, wanting, and acting in accordance with God's reality and what He wills for ours. God gives us such freedom to discover our being and the good use of our freedom that it may seem like we can act against his law. But God is not mocked. Whenever we act against him, we can be sure that the consequences are coming. 
We don't even have to think in terms of active punishment here, but simply understand this, that ultimately, reality has no room for anti-reality. God's kingdom has no room for sins. Being can only allow the antithesis of being for so long. Sin can never have the last word, because all of its words are ultimately ineffectual, all of them. But even more astounding for the Christian is this. In Jesus Christ, we have the ultimate pledge that reality is headed toward a perfect and complete yes, that the day is coming when all the forces of evil are vanquished and God is all in all. Christ teaches us and proves to us that ultimately only God's love and what is created through God's love is real, and that therefore we only are insofar as we refuse sin and self-will and say yes with our whole being to God. St. Paul calls the wages of sin death for very logical reasons. Self-will destroys itself because it's foundationless. Desire collapses in on itself in pain. Whatever acts only for its own sake, selfishly, acts for a falsity, a phantom, nothing. Self-will behaves in a fantasy prison of its own making that because it contradicts the basic structure of existence as intended and maintained by God, ultimately ends up in an abyss. Christian revelation is therefore essentially about the real and false conditions for being and acting, and thus for bearing fruit with our lives. If we want our lives to be fruitful, there is only one way, adhere to the will of the Father. While we may achieve many marvelous things, have many worldly accomplishments, and experience lots of impressive things, if these are not in line with God's will, they mean nothing and will not last. They stand for a certain time but then fall, for only God's love and what is made in his love stands forever. Unless what we do is a shared doing with God, a cooperation of our will and his, a doing that thus comes from, returns to, and abides in him, our doing remains isolated. It remains self-will. The fact that something is praiseworthy in human eyes is no criterion whatsoever. For only God knows what is really praiseworthy, because only he knows when our action is rooted in praise of him. He knows the spirit in which we do everything we do, and for it to bear fruit, for it to be real and true, it must be in his spirit, through his spirit, with the power of his spirit in us. Only then could we even begin to be sure that what we work on earth is God's work. It always comes back to the same question, my will or thy will. Even our best planned initiatives, even our most well-intentioned ideas, even our most concerned attempts at love may go awry of the Holy One, because what matters always is not a demonstration of our worth, but our obedience to God. Adhering to the will of the Father is the only criteria, and we must look every day to his Son to know what that means, how beautiful it is, and how perfect it will be.